Lionel Messi is physically perfect for his style of play. At five foot seven, he's equipped with a low center of gravity that complements and multiplies his technical ability. Combined with tremendous upper body strength, it's a big part of why he's arguably become the greatest player in history. But without early medical intervention, his career might never have happened. Messi was raised to be a footballer. He received his first Newell's Old Boys shirt for his first birthday. He was never seen without a ball, and as the cliche goes so often, that included at bedtime too. The ball also belonged at his feet, and that was apparent from a very early age. At four years old, we realized he was different. Jorge Messi, his father, recalled. He played with his brothers, who had seven and five years on him, and he used to dance around them. It's a gift, something he's born with. He was also ferociously competitive. Other family members recall a boy who would always cry when he lost, and who would always become red-faced and irate. But so far, so familiar. These are stories from the pages of any professional player's autobiography, and they are hardly unusual. The young Messi, however, was different, and not just because of his talent. He was small. In fact, he was the smallest player on any pitch he played on, and that had always been the case. According to the Times, Ian Hawkey, writing in 2008, on his first day at school, Messi was excluded from the playground kickabout on account of his height. From the age of six, he was part of Newell's academy. At 11, he would almost join River Plate. One of the club's scouts actually turned up at his sister's christening in an attempt to sign him. But a medical at the Buenos Aires club would cause concern. Jorge Messi was told that his son had barely grown over the past few years, and that at just four foot four, then he was projected to reach just four foot seven inches. After a battery of tests lasting a year and observing that the boy had barely grown over a period of 24 months, a specialist, a Dr. Diego Schwartzstein, diagnosed a case of growth hormone deficiency. A GHD is a rare condition caused by the inadequate secretion of growth hormone from the pituitary gland. According to the National Library of Medicine's website, its prevalence is approximately one to four thousand to one to ten thousand, and treatment involves the injection of synthetic human growth hormone. In Guillaume Balaguer's biography of Messi, Dr. Schwartzstein remembered a determined young boy who was unfazed by the diagnoses or the prospect of treatment, a boy who didn't cry and who was just focused on doing what he could to grow. Even so, that treatment required daily injections of HGH in alternate legs. Which Messi had to administer himself each night, and which, according to Balaguer's biography, left him with visible puncture marks from the needles. The biggest strain was on the family's finances. At estimate, the hormone replacement therapy cost nine hundred dollars each month, and while middle class by European standards, that was a heavy expense to bear, particularly with Jorge only earning around sixteen hundred dollars each month as a factory worker. It helped to create a decisive moment in Messi's career. He'd been a junior at Newell's Old Boys since the age of six, but according to his father, Jorge, the Argentinian club were only willing to part subsidize the cost of treatments, not pay for them outright. They gave me three hundred pesos, three hundred dollars at the time, and never any more. Messi Senior told the German magazine Kicker, before acknowledging that his son would have stayed at his hometown club had they agreed to cover those costs. But it was not Newell's as an institution that let us down. It was the people who were in charge at the time. A 13-year-old Messi would also spend another week at River Plate on trial in the year 2000. He was only here for three or four days, and he blew us away. Eduardo Ibrahimian told Goal.com. Again, though, an agreement couldn't be reached. Exactly why has never been determined, and one of football's great what-ifs was created. Now, the actual story thereafter is well known. In September 2000, Messi trained with Barcelona. And in December 2000, one of the most famous anecdotes in footballing history took place, with the Messi family having returned to Argentina. Their agent, Josep Maria Mingueya, who was once responsible for bringing Diego Maradona to Catalonia, met Charlie Rishak, Barcelona's technical director at a local tennis club, and signed the famous napkin, which in effect brought Messi to Camp Nou. Well, in effect, perhaps, but but it wasn't quite that simple. Upon arriving in Spain, Messi wouldn't be living at La Masia, but instead in a house with his family. And because the FIFA regulations of the time forbade transfers of minors unless accompanied by an adult, Barcelona needed to find a job for his father. They would agree to both requests. They'd rent a flat for the family and found Jorge a job with the company that provided the club with security staff. Importantly, they also agreed to cover the cost of his future hormone treatment. 
Before that agreement was formalized, they'd actually be paid for privately by a club director, Joan La Cueva. And the tiny boy from Rosario, who was once so small he wasn't even allowed to play at all, would grow to become five foot seven, just under average height in Argentina, but still two inches taller than Diego Maradona.